The American kestrel is a small but mighty falcon about the size of a morning dove or robin. In Connecticut, the kestrel has been adversely impacted by the reduction of agriculture, regrowth of forests, and overall development that have diminished habitat and suitable nesting areas. This is where Art Gingert of West Cornwall comes in. Since 1977, Art has worked tirelessly on the kestrel's behalf by building bird boxes, identifying suitable habitats, and mounting nest boxes for kestrels to breed. Through the American Kestrel Nest Box Program and Art's efforts, there are now nearly 90 nest boxes in more than two dozen towns across Connecticut. Following lengthy research, Art designed a nest box that has become the gold standard for helping kestrels to nest and raise their young. Every job Art has had has kept him close to the natural world, whether landscape photographer or leader of expeditions in Canada and Alaska. He freely shares the knowledge he has with those he meets, including recently helping the Simsbury Land Trust enhance the wildlife habitat on some of its property by installing a kestrel nest box. For his lifetime dedication to the beautiful kestrel, Aquarion is honored to present Art Ginger with a 2021 Environmental Champion Award in the adult category. Hello, my name is Art Gingert. I'm the creator and principal field monitor for the Northwest and North Central Connecticut American Kestrel Nest Box Project. I'm a naturalist photographer and part-time arborist who has lived in this beautiful town of Cornwall for many years. Along with a few colleagues, I have done mostly volunteer conservation work with these small open country falcons in various parts of the state beginning in 1977. While working for the National Audubon Society as manager and biologist at the Miles Wildlife Sanctuary in Sharon, I set up an outreach project on farmland to assist American kestrels, eastern bluebirds, and barn owls, three species which were on Audubon's blue list, which was a national early warning effort to identify birds which were declining and in trouble. Like bluebirds and barn owls, kestrels favor open country, often agricultural habitat with short grass and scattered trees. And they have been facing a varied mix of negative factors which have caused their decline. Here in Connecticut, a main factor is the loss of farmland as pastures and hay meadows have given way to the continuing regrowth of the state's woodlands and extensive forest over the last century. Kestrels face serious competition from non-native European starlings for nest locations and are also affected by residual pesticides in our environment. One of the very best ways that people can help kestrels is by building appropriate nest boxes. Installing them in ideal habitat and monitoring these boxes during the nesting season. In the early years with Audubon, my student interns and I monitored the nest boxes in our study area in Sharon and Lakeville, and we enjoyed good success, which continues to this day. And when the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection listed kestrels as a species of special concern in 2002, and then threatened in 2004, I knew it was time to take our project much further afield. Since then, our work with nest boxes in many Connecticut towns has made a real difference. By 2015, kestrels were downlisted back to species of special concern. After two projects, our own and that of my colleague and friend Tom Sayers in Eastern Connecticut helped nurture many pairs of breeding kestrels each year. Today, my project group works with 50 to 55 pairs of kestrels and some 85 nest boxes in 30 Connecticut towns. We banned almost all the kestrel nestlings and some adults and receive reports of our banded birds from the Hudson Valley, from various points along the Atlantic coast all the way south to Florida, and also while monitoring our own nest boxes here in Connecticut. Lastly, the priority going forward is to try and find ways of making sure that the project and support work for Connecticut kestrels continues on for many years in the future. I'm very grateful to the Aquarion Water Company for recognizing my longtime conservation work with kestrels in Connecticut and for the honor and privilege of this award, which is so generous and appreciated. I'd also like to thank Project colleague Mike Dudek of Audubon Sharon for many years of dedicated monitoring of our original nest box sites in Sharon and Lakeville. Melissa Baston and the Quinnipiac Valley Audubon Society and also the Connecticut Ornithological Association for project support. 
A number of Connecticut land trusts, especially the Northwest Connecticut Land Conservancy, for allowing me to work with kestrels on their preserves. And my friend Don Heine, accomplished photographer, who has been a valued sidekick while outbanding young kestrels. Thank you all.